So I decided to make everything fit without buying something new. It means I gotta, I gotta revert to air. Welcome to Simple Rudd. This episode is going to be more meshalicious. A lot, lot, lot more. So, in the last episode, I ended on a rather sad note. Essentially, this sticks out about 10 millimeters too far to fit my 154 radiator. In fact, you can see I uh, scarred it up a little bit, so that's, that's sad. Nothing that can be fixed. I still sad. So I went through and did a little reviewing to find out where I made my mistake. And looking on the Meshalicious website and going into their manual on there, which has a lot more information, it shows a 155 millimeter maximum width for the graphics card. Now in the picture, it shows that with the 155 being actually on the other side of this back plate, which it's still showing a full radiator and full fan in that picture to fit it. So I trusted that. And since the block is 156 millimeters, but I'm only using 54 millimeters of the given 63, I made the assumption, you know, made an ass out of myself, that it would fit. <clears throat> It does not fit. It, it, it does not fit. Now, I could modify the case to scoot the graphics card over 10 millimeters, but instead I did some thinking on it, and I'm going to revert it to air. Um, it's not going to be as quiet. It's not going to stay as cool as it was. But from all the reviews on this graphics card, I can still overclock it, keep it rather quiet, get the same performance at, you know, higher temps. Sadly with this water block, it stayed around 35C. It stayed well below the 40C. But, you know, switching it over to air, we're probably going to see it running in the 60s and maybe the low 70s. So that's not, it's not ideal. But I'm also having issues with this graphics card. So this way, if it does still be the graphics card causing errors, does still be if it's the graphics card making the mistake, you know, the issues that I'm finding, then it's going to be so much easier to pull it out if it's on air than it would be with full custom loop. So that's, you know, kind of the positive angle I'm looking at this. Now, don't forget to subscribe so you can learn from my mistakes and, you know, save you the money, the time, and the hassle of making them yourself. You know, feel free to comment down below, you know. Um, tell me your experiences with similar issues and how you've overcome them. You know, it's, it's a fun conversation. We all make mistakes and it's, well, it's up to us to fix them. Well, the water block is now off and the air is back on. Well, the looks of this thing. It's a little sad to see it go. But ultimately, it was the right decision. Not just to fit the radiator, but because I'm not entirely sure if this thing's good to go or not. So, for, you know, removal purposes or changes, this was the correct decision. Now, before I throw this back in, I do want to explain that I did have to, once again, lower this. So, my goal was to be on the top notch. I'm now on the bottom notch. This is actually taller than the water block, so it did stick out, and now it fits, well, just about perfectly, as in there ain't no more room. That being said, in order to move this guy, you have to take off the motherboard and the power supply. So when you're building in this case, be prepared to make a lot of changes. So let's get the graphics card in this guy. Again, I still got that chassis all wonky just to... I didn't want to put it back together just to find out that I need to take it apart to fit the radiator. So now hooking this guy in, you gotta slide that up in there. Slide this sideways. 
to make sure this is in the up position. It's not like your normal latch slider, which is a little unusual. But then your graphics card should just slide right in there. Just like that. And then you can push this down to lock it in place. And then we're locked. I'll try and show you. So this has like a millimeter or two of clearance. It's not much. Now the question is, will the damn radiator fit? Will it? It should now. I took out all of the clearance issues. So, voila, radiator. So, I'm going to button this top back up real quick. Well, actually, before I get too far, I need to screw the graphics card in. That's kind of, kind of important. I don't know where I was going with skipping that part, but let's get that done real quick. Now, to note, it will be somewhat difficult to remove the graphics card with the radiator. And by difficult... Well, let's just say I might still be stuck with draining and swapping the loop when, or if, I should say, if I need to replace the graphics card. So now the mesh back panel makes more sense because, well, it's going to be airflow back there. So that'll be nice. That'll definitely help with the cooling of this graphics card. Uh, my only concern is potentially how loud it'll be. So that might be something I need to dial in. But, you know, I didn't really overclock it. Because I didn't really need to. I don't play a whole lot of high intensive games. And most of my time really is spent in SolidWorks and video editing. So there is that. Now, start getting this top panel hooked back together. I should be able to fit the radiator in now without having to undo all of this stuff. So now the moment of truth. Will it fit with case put together? Yes, yes it will. Now my current plan is that the ports will be at the bottom. But this is open for open for debate and change depending on you know, which route I really decide going. So this gets a little nifty. You got just enough room to kind of get in there with your finger. Hopefully I can line this up and get a screw started. Which of course I can't see. One has started. So one of the big selling points for the Noctua, and I guess, you know, some of the nicer Corsair fans, and it looks like Arctic starting to do it as well on their RGB fans, is rubber mounting grommets. It's kind of a big deal, right? Because the metal on metal with the vibrations The metal on metal with the vibrations is not a good sound, right? It's not a sound anyone really wants to hear. Now the other fun part is going to be, well, trying to get this to where it's 
started, but it's loose enough that I can slide it up because I don't think I want it this low. Sorry, I don't think I want it this low. Let me get this up where I do want it. Which looks like that's about as high as it's gonna go with cables up top. So these screws are just barely long enough, which is nice, I guess. It means I'm not going to damage the radiator by inserting them too far. But it does mean it's a little more of a pain to install. So now the other thing I will have to figure out, so clearly I'll be removing these fans in the future, is the wire routing. So I'm going to have to work that into my custom bracket and I'm going to have to allow space for, you know, both cables. And I didn't pay attention when I was mounting this, so I'm going to have to redo that later. But I also probably want to do a lot of the cable management while the radiator is out and such as well. So that is still something that is going to need done. Actually, I can, if I get this mounted, I can show you the cable mod cables that I have picked out for this build. You know, I normally do like some form of a theme on my builds. I really like that. I haven't really decided on one for this. And really it might just not be a theme in the way I normally go about it. It might just be a color. You know it might just be so clearly black. I've got white cables I got very little RGB now so as you can see she's snug and something I already know because I looked at it earlier this does not go where I'd hoped and there's really no way of getting short enough RAM for it to fit it's just not gonna happen now I could go with something pretty short right here so that's going to turn cable management into a nightmare. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm kind of back to trying to figure something out. Now one thing that sucks about switching to the air is, well I can still take it off actually. Let's do that. So now we have it. Which is, you know, this little bit of room which helps me access this. It was originally where I was tempted to put the pump that's not going to work now so you know loop did get a little simpler not adding the graphics card but not all that simpler and oh yeah so while uh, we're wrapping this video up figured i could show you the cable mod cables so no more extensions thank goodness for that but they're white and it's completely white. You know, I was thinking carbon, but I kind of want the cables to be visible. Um, they're going to be interesting doing cable management in here because everywhere you look, there's, well, there's no room. So that'll be something to figure out as I go. But hopefully they're not crazy long because cable mod I didn't do specific length which I could have and maybe I should have but this was easy 70 bucks and then I might have showed you this already in the last video we're gonna do it real quick again 
And I think I might actually have to install it upside down for the cables to route where I need them to. But the goal with this is a little display right there. And as you can see, things are starting to get very crowded. Now I still need a reservoir and a pump. And once that's figured out, I can start ordering fittings. I already have the tubes. So it's getting there. And there's no coolant in it, and it's already rather heavy too. So don't forget, I'm also putting a fan up top. With that, I have a mess to clean up. Now don't forget to subscribe. I've got this coming in. I've still got other videos that I've recorded that I haven't edited yet that may or may not have viewed during this. I don't know, I might bump this up in order so you get to go through this as all the other videos are rolling out too. And, you know, feel free to comment down below. Give me feedback on, you know, the lighting or the video quality or, you know, what you think of the build, what you would do differently. Yeah, with that, thank you.